Welcome into the Oddity Shoppy Oddballs, where the bazaar is always on shale. I don't know what I was going to say, but there you go. <laughs> I'm your host, Kara, with your other host, curator, whatever the fuck we are, Zachariah. It's interchangeable at this point. <laughs> this is the podcast where we <laughs> Sorry. tell you creepy, odd, weird, strange, horrifying Woo! tales <laughs> from around the globe. Uh, I'm doing doing good. You know why I'm doing good? Why? 95 straight weeks. 100 episodes officially today, <gasps> dude. This is episode 1 fucking 100, which is insane. I thought maybe we'd get 10 episodes. Here's the thing. I I am excited and I am proud for us. But why does it feel like we've done way more work than <laughs> just 100 episodes? <laughs> Because we learned along the way that the podcast is far more than us just sitting down and talking to each other. But it's fun. This is true. Well, that's not true. Well, that's awesome for us. You know, we we tried to maybe plan something cool for our hundredth, and then it came up like I don't. It came up so quick. Oh, you, I don't you even don't know think what happened. I have a cool episode. No, I don't. <laughs> I meant like we we maybe wanted to try to do something for you guys and whatever, and it was just like all of a sudden we blinked and a hundred episodes was here, and we're like, yeah. <laughs> What? Uh, well, let me ask you this. Okay, out of the hundred that we've done, <gasps> no, I know. What's your favorite one that we've covered? You know, one of my favorite ones that I've done for me, at least, that like I just I don't know why I really loved the Bloody Mary episode. An OG episode. The quality wasn't good. The quality wasn't good as far well the listening quality. But oh god, for you, what have you what one have you done? Well, I mean, just it didn't have to be just mine. I don't know. I. You know me, I fucking black out as soon as we're done listening or, or I'm done listening or recording. I can't so, help it, but... That's okay, because my favorite episode is one that I've done. So, And it's funny, because it's the one right before Bloody Mary. It was our second episode. It was the Flight 401. That's a good one. Yeah. But you know what? I really love... You know what? I don't know. I Honestly... I really have liked every single one that you and I have done because I don't I there's not one that I don't like, I don't think. Okay, here here's my favorite of yours. And I the content was great because it's something I had never heard of, but it was less about the episode, but the reaction. When you covered yes. Duffy's cut, yes, we got I was gonna that, say that awesome, awesome email back from one of the researchers who worked on it, who like we mentioned in there. That actually is really cool. But you know what one I love of yours is the one that we got hmm. so much fucking hate for. <laughs> Fen's treasure yes. and we still get some hate i know so actually those two are so good because you're right it wasn't necessarily the episode it was like the feedback after so yeah those right. those two are actually really high up <laughs> nice nice oh my god tell us what your guys's favorite has been so far. yes yes we want to hear your favorite and if you are listening to this today on launch day on our 100th episode day and you also happen to be at Paracon in no, North Michigan. We will be there. We, we, well, cur- technically, if you're listening on day <laughs> one, we're there right now. So uh, find us, say hi, maybe congratulate us on our hundredth. And maybe you listen to this episode on the drive there. Oh, man. So actually, yeah, I've been like trying to plan my outfits. <laughs> oh, I've already got them all planned. I'm sure you do. Because, I- okay. It's so easy for I'm you. hoping my boy Chris and me don't don't end up matching. We've had a couple. There's, oh, yeah. there's another guy who's always at the uh, Traveler's the Moon. Traveler's Moon. Yes. Mm-hmm. He's one half of Traveler's Moon. Him and his wife. And I swear we've had a couple of close calls where we've yeah. almost worn the same shirt more than once. It's bound to happen. Here's the thing. I He's got good taste. Um, so does she. Here's the thing. I am just the biggest critic of myself. And I think we all are. And I look back and I had such a fun time and I love looking at all of our pictures because it just brings me back. But I hate my outfits. I just didn't I didn't do good. And so now I'm just like, you know what, Kara, why did you try to step out? Like, no. So I just need to find outfits that are me, that are cute, that I feel good in and not, you know, anyway. That's I think now that you've at least been once, too, because you hadn't gone. So you didn't, didn't know to like either. Yeah whatever okay what else you got for me i think we're uh we're just ready to get this hundredth episode shop open i do have one more quick little thing okay i had a brain crisis i guess i would call it today and i was driving to work and i was like we have to we have to do something you and i we have to do something we have to do something substantial in our lives Uh, we gotta like i I don't know we gotta go to a food bank we gotta donate we gotta do something so then i was like what you know what we could do 
we could do a poll on maybe Instagram or something like on here and see like what's a good charity. What could we all raise money for right now? Like what could we do? Because we got to do something. We've got a little bit of platform. We got some listeners. We got some cool people that like, what can we do? You know what I mean? We've got to do something. Yeah. So I like that. Let us know what you'd be interested in donating to. Yeah. Because so, we'd love to support a cause like that our listeners. Yeah. Have. And so I thought it would be nice like if we just did something. And I, um, your friend at Holly and Hemlock, you know, she donates some of her proceeds every month to yeah. a different type of charity. And I think that is so cool. I don't know if we can do Ooh. that extent. But Our friend I think at if- Holly and Hemlock is also going to be writing in some stories soon. Reminder, Ooh. everybody else. So anyway, that's just that's a thought that I have. So let's let's collaborate. Let's do something. You know, let's make the world okay. a little better. I like it. I like where your head's at. OK. Now, do you have a question for me? Open the shop up. I do. Um, OK. It, it's a twofold because the. Ugh. I have to ask. I, it's an easy twofold. Did you ever play chicken as a kid? Um, yeah. I mean, probably like riding bikes at each other, right? Or like something like that. Yeah. What's the most dangerous game of chicken you can ever remember playing? Probably nothing because I'm a chicken. You just lost immediately. Yeah. Do you um? Do you remember the... De- not remember because it's still there. Do you know of the Detroit People Mover? Yeah. So when I was like probably... 12 to 13 you idiot me my best friend my sister and her best friend would just you know it costs like 50 cents to get on so we just ride it around for like half a day uh, and explore like the different buildings and stuff but we started playing this game of chicken to see who could at every stop run out and tag the wall and come back in like stay outside the longest yeah i won technically i also got left at the station and had to try to find my friends later but so it's just me like 12 years old standing on the people mover platform in detroit trying to figure out how to find my friends and they were not at the next stop they got they got off like a few down to mess yeah. with me they said denise mm-mm. she's probably <laughs> like, get get away from me i'm working here's some money go in which yourself. is exactly what happened because she brought us all to work for her yep. at the flower shop on a holiday and, you're annoying. and, then, and then you're annoying. She, she's just like get out of my hair yeah yeah because you're you're fucking everything up you're not helping and she has to redo everything that she's asked you to do anyway so it's like give give her give you guys 50 cents get the fuck away from me. i love it uh and bring her back food okay. yeah yeah so yeah. denise i got you Oh, I bought Denise something today. Oh, my God. Well, <laughs> don't ruin the surprise. I'm not going to. I just remembered I bought Denise something today. Uh, <laughs> okay, anyway. Okay, episode 100. I wanted to cover the first haunted location I oh. could ever remember visiting as a kid. Oh. And I know okay. it's one that's close to your heart, too. It's on the bucket list. And if it's going to be me, you know it's going to be a boat. <gasps> The Queen, Queen fucking Mary. Mary. Yes. Okay. Ooh. So. I was so pumped. I want to take you on a little bit of history. You know me. Uh, we got to get the backstory. And then okay. we're going to talk about why the ship is so haunted today. Mm. Okay. We're going back to Great Britain, 1928. And the Cunard Line, which is a company of sh- uh, a shipbuilding company. Mm-hmm. starts construction on a 75,000 ton unnamed ship. I love this. Early in its construction, they just really referred to it as Hall number 534. Okay. So that was 1928. 1930 rolls around. The Great Depression hits. And like every other business at the time, uh, luxury liners suffered greatly. There weren't that many people traveling across the Atlantic. Uh, so there was no demand to continue building ocean liners. However, in 1931, the Cunard Line, they apply for a loan from the government to finish number 534, and the loan is granted, but it came with a bit of a caveat. Uh Uh-oh. The government only approved the loan if Cunard would merge its operations with none other than the White Star Line. (laughs) The ones who built Titanic. Which was also obviously struggling at the time. So both companies came together and they began construction of whole number 534. Okay, so how did it get its name? This is, I couldn't find anything saying this is 100% true or not true. It's a little bit of conjecture, but it's also pretty funny. I am going to just pretend it's true. So the ship was originally to be named the Queen Victoria. Okay. Which was not the Queen at the time. Queen Mary was the Queen at the time. Queen Victoria had passed. Oh, I okay. So representatives from the Cunard line go to King George V to ask for permission to name the ship after Britain's greatest queen. 
And Queen or King George responds, sure, my wife Mary would be delighted, knowing mm-hmm. full well that they did not mean his wife. I have to believe that that's true. Oh, yeah. So the representatives realized they had no other choice, and hole number 534 was officially named the Queen Mary, after mm-hmm. the greatest queen. <laughs> that's kind of fucking hilarious, though. Okay, so construction takes three and a half years at the cost of 2.5 million pounds. Which is... What in today's money? I was waiting. 310 million US dollar. I even put it in US dollar from pounds for you. Thank you. Um, And on September 26th, 1934, the ship is finished. Much like the Hotel Cecil built at the same time, Queen Mary decked out in Art Deco style, all of its decor and furnishings. Wow. Why does that not make sense to me? Yeah, they're built at like the exact same time. Wow. Yeah. Um, Super, That's super weird. luxurious liner, though. So obviously it's meant to bring people back and forth across the Atlantic. She was a thousand feet long. And with the White Star Line being involved, it was the styling of it is very similar to the Titanic. Mm -hmm. Uh, While actually the Queen Mary is quite a bit larger, has more passenger decks and is also faster with three times the engine power. Because, you know, I got to compare it to the Titanic. I mean, no, for sure. But I mean, it just gives it gives us like something to compare it to because everybody knows the Titanic. Right. So it also has a three story main dining hall, two swimming pools, a library, music studio, lecture hall, hospital and so much more. It's decorated with elaborate murals, paintings, sculptures. It's like basically this giant floating piece of art. It's amazing. It is amazing. And even like thinking about the Titanic, it is still just wild that these times they even built something like this, that there was two right. pools to the. Like, it's just actually really wild to think about because you think about now, like we are bougie and we want more and more and more and more and more now more than ever. So just like, I don't know, it's just to to put that in perspective back then for the Titanic and the Queen Mary that we were doing these types of things. It's just it's just wild. I don't know. And the Queen Mary was genius. So their pools were still interior, like the old ocean Mm -hmm. liners, but they built one of them over the boiler room. So the pool was was heated. heated. Yeah, which is so cool. It's so smart. (laughs) I love it. I don't understand this. It takes three and a half years to build. It's finished in 1934, but it takes another two years to actually go on its first, like, maiden, maiden voyage. It's crossed some channels and moved around a bit. three and a half years actually sounds quick to me. Yeah. I don't know. So anyways, though, 1936, March 24th, she leaves on her maiden voyage from Southampton to New York. And unlike the Titanic, she actually makes it. (laughs) Spoiler. (laughs) <laughs> spends the next few years though making countless trips back and forth carrying up to 2500 people at a time just starts raking in awards with how powerful it is it's super popular because it's so so luxurious for the time yeah. um and it becomes like a, almost a popular destination for the rich and the famous no, we're just until i know oh god good <laughs> charlotte man <laughs> I haven't listened to them in so long. Until. And, oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to go on a binge tonight. Mm-hmm. So until, yes, the the depression ends. And after a few years of reprieve, we get World War II. Mm. At this time, the ocean liner is retrofitted to become a military transport ship because of its size and speed. And it would haul anywhere from 5,000 to 15,000 troops at a time. Now, they repaint her in this gray color, and this is kind of badass. She get, When she's working as the transport ship, she is known as the Gray Ghost. That is so badass. That is so cool. Uh, it's because, so the speed, the maneuverability, what it would do is kind of like travel across in these zigzag patterns. Yeah. And it was able to outmaneuver the German U-boats. Which is... When you think about it, though, that's a huge fucking boat. And you said, like, when it was just running regular passengers, what was well, how many people did you say? Twenty five hundred or something? Twenty five hundred. To be 2, that fast. Now it's going five thousand to fifteen thousand and still moving. Yeah. So anyways, though, yeah, it, you know, it's it's an, such an impressive ship that it gets a bounty placed on it by none other than Adolf himself. Yes. So it's also around this time. I'm so fucking sorry. Did you see that fucking TikTok of that bimbo child that was like, I don't understand why we don't know Hitler's last name. Oh, my God. No, I did not see that. Like, we know everything. How do we not know that Hitler, like, what's Hitler's last name? Oh, God. (laughs) Anyway, continue. They just need to listen to us. They'll learn so much. It might not all be correct facts, but they'll learn. (laughs) 
to learn something. <laughs> right. So <laughs> okay. anyways, it is during this time as the transport ship that the Queen Mary begins to collect some souls. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll, more on that later. A uh, little teaser for you. Me collecting the souls. So after the war, mid-1940, the Queen Mary was restored and refitted as a luxury liner um, and got plenty of upgrades, too. So, you know, she gets a little facelift. Yeah, she deserves it. By the 1950s, she's starting to show her age and lose some of those awards to some of the other faster, newer boats. Mm -hmm. And then by 1958, transatlantic flights begin, 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 we begin. began uh, to replace ships because it's faster, it's less yeah. expensive. And all ship ticket fit sales start to fall. God, mm -hmm. I'm I cannot talk. She's just ever. the first wife, and everybody's now having all the mistresses. Truly, 1965, the entire Cunard fleet is operating at a loss, and it's decided to sell the Queen Mary and retire it from service. Mm. So, on September 27th, 1967, just after completing her thousand and first voyage. Oh. Uh, carrying over two million passengers, holy and shit. traveling under or just under four million total miles. Oh my god! She is officially retired and sold to the highest bidder, the city of Long Beach, California. Yes, for a whopping three point four five million dollars. That doesn't even seem like a lot for her in today's money 32.5 million Ooh, baby that's about 10 percent of its original cost but yeah it also lasted for 35 years yeah. and millions of ticket sales i'm sure that that was still a good price okay right so the ship today it's still owned by the city of long beach it's, it's docked there now it's been open and closed to the public multiple times since the 60s but it is open it is now a floating hotel and tourist attraction so, if you want to, you can stay the night, you can eat, you can shop, you can drink on board. They have tours, excursions, wedding venues. Did you look up how much it was to stay there? I did not. I should have. Oh, God, yeah, I want to know. I should look up the wedding venue. Not that I'm getting married anytime soon, but that I'll would be you. sick. All right. <laughs> we'll have to, well, I would say you'd have to divorce your husband first, but I performed that wedding and I'm still not even sure I did it right. So, <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> well, I okay. Were. So, right, I told you I got to go. So when I was a little tiny tyke and my dad was working in California, we got to go and uh, tour the ship. And then we got to go and do the official ghost tour. Wow. Which I'll tell you a little bit about how the ghost tour went at the end, because I did not handle it how I would today. Oh, God, I can only fucking imagine. Oh, yeah. OK, so we got the history of the ship. Now we can get into why it's so damn haunted. haunted okay so it was when she was a transport ship that she starts collecting souls yes poor thing here's what we do know is the ship itself claimed at least 47 souls on board that's important because mm -hmm. there have been hundreds upon hundreds of deaths caused by the ship yeah but they're not on the count because they weren't on board yeah mm. Uh, most of the workers say claim there's over 100 active spirits on the board on board the boat at any time. Let's kind of go through like some of the most haunted either events or locations. Are you ready for a tour? I'm ready. So the first one's not actually inside the ship itself. Uh, it happened externally. And this is where it starts to get haunted when it was the transport ship. So okay. what we're talking about is the haunted propeller. Oh, I don't know if I've heard this. So on October 2nd, 1942, uh, like we had talked about, the, uh, the Queen Mary at this time, the Grey Ghost, is using those large engines to race across the Atlantic from U.S. to Europe to bring more troops. So okay. she's doing that, that zigzag, zigzag maneuvering pattern, okay. right, to ward off the U-boats. Well, she zigged and then she zagged and zagged way too hard and uh, rips through her own transport ship. So, like, because these were really big, they had, you know, military oh. transport ships. Oh, no. So the HMS Kirkoa is mm -hmm. railed by the Queen Mary right off the coast of Ireland. Oh, shit. OK. She, like, sli slices through it. And I might have known that part, but oh, OK. 338 people which from both boats fall into the water. Mm. Kirkoa sinks. 
And people literally, because there's like 15,000 people on the Queen Mary, a lot of people kind of fall off into well, yeah. icy waters. Oh, well, sure. To make matters worse, the Queen Mary receives orders to continue at full speed ahead <gasps> as to not become a target. Okay, I mean, I understand that, but damn. And she had just sustained some damage herself because she literally cut through and sank the rescue. Or res- ugh, rest- escort. God. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I know. So the boat chugs along and many of those who fell into the water are now pulled into the large propeller where they have not only drowning, but many oh. people were propellered. But, you know, I, I don't know. I said haunted propeller. It might not be a haunted propeller. But so when you visit the Queen Mary, they've built almost like a room around it. So you can always see down in the water and see the propeller yeah. and have like a little observation deck. And a lot of people, like when they look in there, they something just makes them feel uneasy, whether Weird. it's like a thassalophobia, a giant, you know, structure under the water. Yeah, or which I do get that. It kind of, you know, might just be an uneasy feeling because of the amount I'm of lives taken. So, many people. so anyways, though, it could also explain some of the ghostly figures of sh- soldiers seen throughout the ship. OK, but yeah, it really kind of just starts to set the environment for the trapped souls to to start. Hmm. So next on our stop is door number 13. Down into the bowels of the ship we go. Like most boats this size, there are watertight doors which can close off sites like the storage areas, the boilers, and the engine room. So that in the case if the ship starts taking on water, they can lock it down and keep her, you know, floating. So we're heading over to watertight hatch door number 13, which is located in what's called the shaft alley. Which sounds like a terrible place to work. I don't like that name. <laughs> so <laughs> that sounds like a gay bar. It sounds bar. gross. <laughs> the shaft alley. The shaft alley. It totally sounds like a gay bar. <laughs> oh, I love it. If it's if it's a gay bar, I kind of like it. <laughs> okay. Oh okay. my god. Yeah. Okay. We we need some laughs because it's about to get not good again. It's already bad. One evening in 1966. The watertight doors in the engine and boiler rooms were ordered to be closed. Mm-hmm. This was kind of thought to be like uh, the higher ups knew that it was a drill, but the people did not. Okay. But the crew, most likely bored, decided to play a game of chicken with the doors. So three crew members start, two veteran members, one at a time, take a moment to run through the shutting door, leaving newbie and 18 year old <gasps> John Petter to run through last. What? He takes a moment. He prepares, he begins to run, and it's unclear whether he tripped and fell, or if the other two crew members jokingly tried to hold him back. Oh no! But whatever happens, only about half of John's body makes it through the door before it seals. What kind of fucking game is this? A terrible game of chicken. I hope he haunted those fuckers so bad. Oh, well, we'll get there. Um, so John, though... Lucky for him, is taken to the hospital on board, uh, but his crush injuries are far too severe and he does pass away. So, oh my God, crew from that moment on and now workers on the boat today have seen a young man in overalls in the area where that door is. Sometimes he's seen with his tools. Sometimes he's even known to interact with the living and ask if they've seen his tools. Oh, when people do get he's a good still look, just trying to work after all these years, man. That's sad. He needs to retire. I know. I know, the <laughs> poor guy. Uh, so when people do get a good look, though, he just simply vanishes before their eyes. Others don't really see him, but they get feelings. So there is the ghost tour goes through this area. Okay. And tour will feel like like somebody, whoever's in the back will be like, oh, somebody else has joined, right? And they turn around and no one's there. <laughs> or that person might just get a grease stain on their clothing that was not there prior. Oh, that's interesting. He also has a real big fondness to mess with the security guards at night, making all kinds of unexplained noise in that area. Like he's literally just hitting his tools on some of the pipe shafts. Did you feel like you felt him? Do you remember? Or are you going to tell us all um, about your experience? I, I'll tell you about my experience, okay. but it was just more about me being a pussy. Okay. <laughs> so we we did go through Watertight Door 13, but we did not. I, I didn't experience anything real at that time. And I'll... I'll I'll, oh god yeah. what did denise do no it was okay. it was more on the boat at that time it was very okay. early 2000s okay. okay we'll get there but first we have to stop by the pool kara so oh, just no. above the this is boiler rooms 
the first class swimming pool. Um, I don't think this is actually the sad one you're thinking of because oh. that's the other pool. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> so this pool has not been used in quite some time. It was once a statement of luxury. Uh, so this it's really it doesn't look that gorgeous now because it's been stripped. Well, but yeah, that makes sense. Originally, it had a mother of pearl ceiling. It was heated by the boilers. It had a slide mosaics. The crazy thing is, though, is like at its deepest, it was eight or 16 feet deep. At its oh. shallowest, it was eight feet deep. There's no shallow end. Oh, it just goes from like a V eight to 16. But then they had like wood boards about so three could, like, feet in the water. Up? Yeah. Oh, or hold. OK, weird. Um. So anyways, throughout this uh, pool, throughout all the years have been reports of apparitions. So sometimes a woman in a tennis skirt is seen mm-hmm. and she'll just kind of walk down the stairs and disappear behind a pillar. OK. Um. Some have seen an older woman in a wedding dress next to a little boy dressed in a suit. Oh. And th- these two just seem to watch the guests and disappear again when you look at them. Does anyone know who they would be? No, nope, these are just probably guests from way back when. But in a wedding dress? yeah interesting some of the spirits don't show themselves but they do still make themselves known so (laughs) if you get too close to that pool area on a day when the spirits are enjoying themselves you might hear splashing and laughing and if you investigate even closer you might see wet footprints leading from the (gasps) not filled pools i love to the locker rooms where they will abruptly end at a locker that's so cool do you think if you were a ghost, would you be the ghost that shows yourselves or just does that type of stuff? I would show myself to one person in a group and immediately disappear so that their friends that think crazy. they're crazy. And I would just keep doing it to the same person. Okay. <laughs> anyway, now on to the sad one. Our other mm. pool in the second class swimming It's pool. all sad, <laughs> but this is sad. There's a little girl who will sometimes show up in a blue and white dress and people always know when she's coming because the pool area will get almost foggy. Mm. She'll appear out of a cloud of stream, usually looking distraught and saddened. And in the same instance she shows up, she disappears again, but not before you notice that she's clutching her little teddy bear. Her little teddy. It's so sad. So this ghost has been named Jackie and is Mm. rumored to be the... um, drowned spirit or the spirit of a young girl who drowned in the pool during the ship's sailing days um and for some reason she's either decided to stay or is just unable to move on unfortunately Mm -hmm. but she has her little teddy she does have her little teddy all right so that we've gone the outside we've gone through the bottom of the boat let's get into the staterooms and one stateroom in particular Mm -hmm. seems to be like the hot Hot spot. spot Okay, stateroom B340. In 1948, passenger Walter Adamson passes away in this room, and this is where the hauntings mm-hmm. begin. Okay. So, in 1966, 22 years after, we have the first reported or recorded report. Now, other people okay. have rumored it, but this is the first recorded okay. of strange activity as a woman staying in that room claims she was woken up in the middle of the night, her bedding is ripped off of her. Ugh. And at the end of her bed is a mm-hmm. man standing, just watching her. Why does he got to rip off the bedding? I no, know, man, it's his bed. Yeah, so but she screams. No. In the same instant, like all the other spirits on this ship, vanishes. Since 1966, guests report hearing somebody knocking on the door in the middle of the night, having their faucets turned on in the bathroom, lights turning themselves on and off. The maids begin to get messed with next. Ooh. With one maid stating that the covers were ripped from her hands multiple times in one day as she tried to make the bed the over bed. and over. Oh my god, can you imagine? Now, for many, many years, this room was not able to be rented. When I toured the ship, they wouldn't even let us inside. Uh, they would tell oh, you about it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But now you can book the haunted room. Let's book it. You might wake up to find a man dressed from the 30s with a wide brim hat watching you. You might hear phones ringing in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. Or some of your items might just be displaced or disappear altogether from the room. Oh, my God. So, yeah, like I said, for 30 years after or for a total of 30 years, they weren't even renting it out. Like, I guess from when Long Beach bought it till kind of more recently. And it's changed hands a couple times. And like I said, the entire ship was closed for a while. Do you know? And maybe you're going to touch on this, but. Do you know, because the pool that Jackie passed away in, 
that's all blocked off, or at least a couple of years ago, it used to be all blocked off. Do you know if that is? I think through? that one is. I think okay. you can still go through the because all the pictures are always of the first class pool. Okay, um, or one of the pools, the really haunted one, which I thought was the Jackie one. I'm just thinking of when Sam and Colby went. That that's kind of the that first class one. So it's um it's not open to the general public if it's the oh. same way it was twenty some years ago when I went. But it was part of the ghost tour. So the only way to really oh, okay. get into it is to is buy the... Oh, okay. yeah. But see, I thought it was so dilapidated that even they couldn't get in. They could only open the door. I thought they that, weren't allowed to go. That might be then Jackie's pool. That's what I was thinking, Jackie's okay. pool. Okay. I wonder if that's still the same then. No. Yeah, that I don't know. I didn't actually come across that. But now that you bring that up, I do remember that. Hmm. Okay, anyway. Last thing on stateroom B340 is the captain of the ship was actually even afraid to stay in there. <gasps> and to stay in there now you have to sign a waiver i wonder how much it is to stay there so with that being said would you do it we gotta look it up we should yeah because i we wouldn't sleep let's get real we're not sleeping but I, yeah i would rent it out and stay the night yeah i think i'd do it so yeah. th those are the biggest hauntings right so mm -hmm. there's still apparitions seen all over n crazy noises and, and just i i could go on for two hours of the stories but I do want to read to you kind of like two other smaller spots to mention. And these are right, right from an article in Travel and Leisure magazine. Oh, OK. Uh, so the first is the Mauritania Room, which is funny. It's named after the Mauritania, which is a ship that predated Dated. the Titanic and was supposed oh. to be like the Titanic before Titanic. OK, so so this room was just dedicated to this. And named it? Yep. It was named, okay. So in 1989, two women were sent to clean the lounge uh, for a VIP reception. Okay. <laughs> they entered the room, and they found a guest sitting silently on a chair in the middle of the dance floor. Oh, no. When a third woman came in to help with the cleaning, she remarked that the guest was staring, and she asked him to move. <laughs> As the employees started to call security, the guest faded into the air right in front of them, uh, which is crazy when all like th all three people report seeing the Rissy, same thing. Yeah, where they actually thought it was a person just being disruptive and not moving. That's wild. Yes. Do do we know who we think that is? Nope. Okay. Then there's the Mayfair room. Okay. Uh, this was once the ship's beauty salon, but is now used as oh, office cute. space for hotel employees, which is less cute. Yeah. But in 2001, a member of the accounting staff came in early to work at 5.30 a.m. Mm-hmm. And simply felt like something was off. So she went about her office tasks before sitting down at her desk. And then she felt unusually cold. Oh, God. She then felt somebody brush up against the back of her chair. Turns around. No one's there. About two minutes after that, she sees a totally transparent figure in white walk across the room and pass through the door. She grabs her keys, leaves the room, yeah, and no. would not enter again until coworkers arrived. At least she still stayed. Yeah, right. So, like I said, those are the main areas, but the entertaining areas, the dining halls, everywhere Everything. has activity, disembodied voices, apparitions of soldiers, crew, passengers. I mean, at night, this place just kind of comes alive. It's been investigated by everybody, obviously, ghost adventures, ghost hunters. Uh, Ghost Hunters, actually, I believe if I remember correctly from their episode, and it's been 15 years since I saw it, they have video of the bedding being moved. You know what? I think you might be right. The Newkirks have been here. Okay. Um, Sam and Colby. In Eesh. fact, the Newkirks were there with Amy and Adam, Adam. Um, okay. on one of the, uh, oh my gosh, what is Amy? Strange Escapes. They did. Uh, oh, okay. That would be very expensive. Yeah. So that's. Yeah, Amy and Adam from Kindred Spirits Kindred do Spirits, yeah. the strange escape kind of like... Well, isn't it just Amy that does that? Rent a haunted place for... It is Amy's, yeah. Yeah, uh, okay. Well, but yeah, you can... Brings in a bunch of famous investigators, mm -hmm. rents out famous mm -hmm. places. Uh, if you listen to this podcast, you probably know you where it is. Okay. All right. So I, I have a couple short Reddit ones for you. <gasps> I love Reddit. Let's go, baby. And I've been dreading reading this user's name. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Because we have to give the credit, and but I'm gonna try. They picked their name. I know, but I I don't know if I can do it without laughing. So, <laughs> Lil L I L Lil Ford fuck pants, right? <laughs> Lil Ford fuck pants. 
Oh, it's so they good. It. I just want to know the backstory. Yeah, honestly. I stayed overnight on the Queen Mary once. It was a weird experience. Some of our stuff went missing. When we were getting ready to go on the tour, we couldn't find half the things we packed. I want to know what, though, you know? Right. We left for the haunted tour, and it looked like somebody had been in our room. When we woke up the next morning, we all rest- reported a strange heaviness to our sleep, as if a force was holding us asleep. <sighs> Mm. Not like sleep paralysis where you're awake but can't move. Just he- like held in sleep. Is that a bad thing? Uh, yeah. Well, then it goes on. More like the noises that were happening in the room all night that would normally wake you up weren't oh. because you were being held asleep. Oh, creepy. Okay. Yes. I was thinking like you, like if I could be held to sleep, that'd be awesome. I'd have a real good sleep. Uh, right? I love being held when I sleep. <laughs> okay. No, I just meant like held to sleep, like where I was forced to keep sleeping. I don't want to be held while I sleep. Uh, The next one, I don't have to read their name because it just showed user deleted. Oh, yeah. But it said, I had a very odd experience on the Queen Mary. We did an impromptu tour on the boat and there was a flea market in the park next to her. So with admission to the flea market, you could walk around the boat. Oh, that's cool. So my friend and I were walking around, looking at pictures, walking through some hallways and either side of the engine rooms. Going up one side of the engine room on a thin metal ladder, I got very discombobulated. Vertigo. I didn't Mm. know what. I felt sort of dizzy since getting on the ship. This was suddenly very intense. I actually clawed at the railing to hold on as I lost my balance and keeled to the side. While the Queen Mary is technically floating, she doesn't move that much or pitch or roll. It was the strangest thing, and I've never felt anything like it since. Interesting. Not long after touring the boat, my friend and I parted ways. I went home and collapsed into an all-encompassing nap for about two hours. I was suddenly just exhausted, like all my energy had been zapped. Mm-hmm. Texted my friend when I woke up and found out that she was having the exact same experience. So something was sucking their energy. Wow. Interesting. Next one's short, sweet, but I did a paranormal, paranormal investigation in 2009. We were able to take a tour to the bottom of the ship. And I picked up tons of evidence, EVPs of men speaking in German, men who were POWs from World War II who had been transported across the country in the ship's keel. Oh, wow. The entire time from the moment I set foot aboard the ship, I had experiences, including a full apparition encounter, not five minutes after I boarded. I've investigated well over 100 paranormal uh, locations, and no doubt the Queen Mary is the most haunted place I have ever encountered what what was the user on that one you didn't read it uh master chief sierra thank you that's i mean a lot of people do say the queen mary man it has so much damn activity and it's oh, an yeah. easy place to be able to go to we need to go yeah oh, yeah it's not not terrible oh we we need to go um so anyways i did the ghost tour and yeah exactly this a was tiny um, tot. what did you call it was a tiny, tot. tiny tot tiny little tot a little wee dot this was like, it was either late, late 90s or early 2000s. Uh, but the ghost tour at that time was really putting on like the pizzazz. So they <laughs> had like obviously speaker noises. So it was cool. You got to go in the catwalks, the engine oh room and God. through the pools and stuff. But in the pool room when they're talking about Jackie, they have like this <laughs> oh, no. like white screen with the projection and water noises that started. I bury my face in my mom's like shirt and jacket. I, and I was like so pumped to go on the ghost tour. I was like, let's do it. Let's do it. I think they like did it for me. And then after <laughs> the that, I watched the entire the water noise. But they, they, they make this like apparition on a screen. It's so I would oh, chuckle God. now. But I was terrified. Like I just buried my face in her for the rest of the tour. Oh, my God. They're like, we wasted how much money on this for oh, you uh, i'm sure it was <laughs> yeah not cheap and then i don't even watch the rest of their terrible effects because i was like peeing my pants so anyway so you can still go you can do the tours stay in the hotel so last was and final question for you i'm i probably i'm sure okay. she was okay my question sorry the question i have for you is when are we going no oh. <laughs> I don't know. When are we going? We still have to go. Well, we got to go to the Winchester house. We gotta- well, we could hit that Winchester and um, the Hotel Coronado. All the same oh, time. yeah. I don't know. When are we Hotel going? Del. Yeah. Uh, right after Paracon. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. We would, we would have we're to broke. take a picture on the front like we're Jack and Rose because it looks very Titanic. Oh, God. 
I, we're gonna do that on the cruise ship in November. Oh, oh yeah. See, Bernie can I be Jack times. though? <laughs> Obviously. Okay, you good. think that I'm not gonna put my feet up and my arms out? Hell no. <laughs> Oh man. Oh, All right. God. So, anyways, though, for episode 100, that is the first haunted location Yay, I've been to. There are seriously like 15 more rooms we could have talked no, about it's, that are haunted. It's wild. I'm going to go actually, I think I'm going to get off of here and I'm going to go rewatch Sam and Colby's investigation on the Queen Mary. Because now I'm just like, ooh, I want to like. Ooh. I know. I watched so many clips. It's so good. Uh, if you made it this far, drop us a little boat emoji or boat? no, 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 no boat or the hundred, the red hundred emoji for our hundredth episode. Yes. The hundred. Do both. Do both. Um, come on guys. Too. It's episode 100. Give us some ideas to write about. Please write your stories in online. Uh, Karen and I are still debating and figuring out the logistics of getting a number that you could call and leave your stories on. If you would rather do that, if that would make you more motivated, let us know. We've gotten yeah. a few people who said they want us to do that. So now we just actually have to like, you know, follow through. Yep. So we can do that. Um, or we'd like you to do that right in, um, all that kind of stuff. Share with a friend, you know, um, let's think about fundraisers that we can all be a part of and like yes. make the world a little bit better. And yeah, that's about it, right? And thank, thank you for sticking and with us through all these. You. All of the sound quality issues, all of our bad attitudes, all of our... Just thank you. Hey, we've been learning as we go, <laughs> but you know what? We do pretty damn good now. <laughs> I think we do. I think we've always done pretty damn good. Let's get... You know what? True. Give ourselves a pat on the back. This is 100. Think of 100. This one from the first one. We've grown. But I think we've always done pretty well. Yeah. Lots of growth, though. We do yeah. good. We do good. We're going to keep doing good. You guys aren't over it yet. So anyways. All right. So thanks. <laughs> a little delusional. Let's close this shop up. Okay. Well, we got to close because I'm I'm hungry, even though I can't really eat anything. This is goddamn cute. Diet. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Love Have you. Some bacon. Good, I love you. Goodbye. Um, we appreciate you. Happy 100. Happy 100. Most importantly, creepy really eyeballs. Goodbye. Bye. And find us at Paracon. Oh, oh.